Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker. And today we're going to be discussing, if you are a crocheter, how do you transition to knitting? Um, I am not a tutorial channel. I'm not a teaching channel. I am not a very... Um, I'm not very good at things like that, uh, and I'm not set up for filming my work surface or anything like that here. Um, I'm a little bit new to YouTube still. Um, so I figured the best advice I can give you is my experience in learning, what I've learned as I've gone along, and what tools to use. Um, when I was first starting to learn how to knit, and actually had figured out how to knit. I was still using my mom's old aluminum hooks and you know some that my grandmother had for some reason, some that my great grandmother had had uh, that I just ended up with over the years. There's nothing wrong with these. Um, the to me, straight aluminum hooks are going to be harder for a crocheter to learn on that. Um, as a crocheter, you're already used to having your work sit in your lap. So I would recommend actually starting off knitting using a circular needle. But you're looking at me going, eh, what's a circular needle? I don't know what that is. Um... So this is a circular needle. And if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you've actually seen my knitting projects that are whips that are on needles like this. Um, this is what you're going to use to make hats. This is what you're going to use to make a lot of uh, anything that you do in the round. This allows you to work in the round. But you don't have to join it in the round. You can just knit straight on it. Um, I don't think I have any example of straight knitting. Actually, I do. I do have an example of straight knitting. I forgot my hat, but I remembered this. So this is a shawl. It is on a circular needle, but I am knitting it flat. I'm just knitting it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But as I knit, I can hold my project like this, where my project is laying down in my lap, all the weight is off of my hands and wrist, and I'm just going. And I knit exactly like I crochet. Um, I've actually pointed it out in Zoom chats before that, uh, and particularly Carla over at CJ Carla, her crochet pattern and rhythm is identical to my knitting pattern and rhythm. Our hand motion and everything looks exactly the same. So, one of the first pieces of advice I'm going to give you straight out of the gate is don't... If you have these, there's no problem in working with straight aluminum needles. But, if you don't have needles, your first needle... And I'm going to be very explicit in what your first needle should be. It should be either a size 7 or a size 8... 16 inch chow goo circular needle. The brand name is chow goo. It's the red lace circular knitting needle. Red lace. Well, that is how you say, that's how you uh, spell chow goo. Why these specifically? You can see even with the glare, that that is a fairly pointed knitting needle. Now, these are a smaller size. These are U.S. size 3. So, these are a fairly small knitting needle. But you can see that point. It's got a slightly rounded edge. You can see the length of that taper. As you're learning how to knit, those are things that are important for down the road. Um, the Chow Gu... Red Lace Circular is to my knitting as the Crochet Amore hook is to my crochet. 
it has beautiful glide. It's got seamless transition. You don't have any um, sticking or gripping or the join of... I don't know why I put this back in the packet because I knew I was going to need it again. The join between the cable and the needle is a beautiful seamless join. You can see how smoothly that transitions into the needle. You don't have a huge bump or gap here. This is setting by getting the size 7 or size 8 Chow Gu 16 inch. You are setting yourself up for success. My husband always says while playing guitar, if you're learning how to play guitar, buy the best guitar you can afford. Don't buy the El Cheapo for Walmart for $75. Actually buy a real guitar. It doesn't have to be an expensive one, just a good one. And it's because as you're learning, you don't want to have to fight your tools as well as fighting the process of learning something new. These are about $10. Um, sometimes I find them for about $7 on Amazon. You can use, if you're not urgently wanting to learn how to knit, this is a down the road thing. Use an app extension or a web browser extension like Honey or Wikibuy or something like that to um, watch in the background an item on Amazon for price drops. Um, that's what I do a lot of time. That's why I get my, I get the full pack of the Clover Amores for about $24 generally. And it's because I price watch them using the Honey app. Um, so I do recommend doing that if you're not in an urgent hurry, but they're eight to $10 normally anyway. The other reason why I highly recommend Chow Gu specifically, you see as I pulled that out of the pack, how my cable is perfectly smooth, it's straight, I can immediately start working with that. It's not going to twist or kink my work. But there are a lot of needles that are cheap that when you pull them out of the packet, this one has a nice lightweight tip. It's a little bit blunter. It's not got a horrible join at the, it's a little bird at the join. But you see how that cable is twisting up on itself? As you're starting to learn how to knit, you're going to be fighting that cable to keep that cable straight the whole time. So that is why I do not recommend going out and getting just a $2 set from Hobby Lobby generally or Joann's. Um, there have been mass produced needles. The, um, I think they were called Silva Loom needles from Susan Bates years ago. Those were actually fairly decent needles. Um, sorry for the crinkling there. So inexpensive does not mean cheap quality necessarily, but Chow Gu 100% every single time, not going to fail you. The next thing you are going to need, you already have. As a crocheter, you have cotton. And I'm talking your standard Lily Sugar and Cream, Knit Picks Dishy, Peaches and Cream, just your standard, straight up, nothing special, kitchen cotton. And what you're going to do with your size 7 or size 8 fixed circular needle is you're going to make 20 to 25 dishcloths. I know. That sounds so exciting, right? <coughs> you are going to make dishcloths, number one, because cotton is easy to work with. Aside from the fighting it and everything, when you're learning how to knit, it stays looped. It tension, like gaining your tension, tugging it, pulling it, all of that stuff. You're already used to that if you crochet. You're already used to having to tension cotton. Um, I've made no bones about it on my channel. I am not a fan of kitchen cotton. However, when you're learning how to knit, I do recommend using dishcloth patterns. Um, are you making dishcloths to do it because you don't have to worry about it falling off. You don't have to worry about it slipping off. You can, it has massive stitch definition. So you can really see each individual stitch as you go. 
you don't want to be trying to knit with something like scarfy where you get blurred stitch definition. Of course, this doesn't want to like zoom. I mean, I can see where the stitches are just because I'm used to looking at it. This is a um, seed stitch. It's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and then purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. Um, similar to, it, effect is very similar to lemon peel stitch in crochet. But you see how the stitches are not super defined. The halo of the yarn hides your stitches a little bit. You don't want to do that early on. Um, you want to take a step back and make it easy to see. So you've got your needle, you've got your dishcloth cotton. Now you need to know what to do. Watch tutorials, watch videos. If you can find old episodes of the nitty gritty show by Vicki Howell, watch it. Um, that's what finally got it to click with me. Watch as many different styles of knitting as possible. Watch as many different holds of knitting. Try to replicate how they're tensioning and how they're holding the needles and how, I mean, there are pickers who kind of throw their yarn. There are pickers who literally pick the strands of yarn. Um, there are so many, even within, you've got your primary holds, which are Portuguese, English, Continental, and... The one that goes under the arm, which I can't remember the name of. Um, Curzon, don't get in the project basket. There are so many different ways to hold your yarn. There's so many different ways to hold your needles. There's there, and there is no right way to do it. There, there are just ways to do it. Um, it's what's comfortable for you. It's com what's comfortable for how you hold your stuff. Um, I think continental is much more natural for a crocheter because you're holding everything. You're holding your working yarn in your left hand, which are, if you're a right-handed crocheter, you're already used to that. You're going into the stitch, catching the yarn, and coming through, which is exactly what we do in crochet. So to me, continental is definitely the one you want to target first. But watch as much as you can. I watched probably a season and a half of Nitty Gritty trying to hold my yarn. I, I, that's the first time I was exposed to continental knitting and actually seeing continental knitting worked. I had heard of it. I was aware of it, but I'd never actually seen somebody knit that way because all the knitters I know are knitters only. They're not crocheters as well. Um, so target continental style knitting really but watch 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 duplicate 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 until you find the comfortable way for you to do it and there are lots of videos out there that are so beautiful at explaining the direction your stitch should be turned on the needle um they are very good up close videos of showing how you insert the needle grab the yarn and pull it through in up close detail. I can't duplicate that experience for you as much as I would love to. Um, if we were here together in my craft room, I would show you how to knit the way I do all day, every day, but I'm not a very good tutorial maker and I'm not very good at filming. <laughs> Let's be honest. So this is something there are much better people than me to try to follow. And I recommend watching their videos and really delving into it and watching their handholds, watching how they tension their yarn, watching how they, how, the motion that they make for picking up that stitch. Um, with English method, you know, the throwing is, it, it is a longer method of knitting. It does take longer to do it that way. But there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you're, uh, Becky over at Funny Farm Crochet is a crocheter who's learning how to knit and she couldn't get continental knitting. She is an English style knitter. Nothing wrong with that. She's smoking me in socks this year because she's already got a finished pair and I have one half pair and one half sock. So, you know, even though it is a slower method, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a slower result.
Thank you, Melanie. If y'all are not aware, Stitched My Lou is another channel here on YouTube run by Miss Melanie. Thank you so much for my coffee mug. It is still coffee because it is, wow, I'm out of focus. Really? It is 9 o'clock in the morning here. So, you're going to watch your tutorials. You've got your kitchen yarn. You've got your chow goo needle so you don't have to fight. Or you've got the needles that you have. There's nothing wrong with that. When you're um, knitting with straight needles, all of your work is going to be on the shaft of the needle. So, you do have weight on your wrist. So don't do anything much larger than a dishcloth on a straight needle. Do transition, highly recommend transitioning to circular needles as soon as possible. If you don't have the funds to buy a new circular, use your straights until you can't anymore. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I know knitters who prefer straight needles. I just don't know any crocheters who knit who ended up preferring straight needles. Um, once they discovered circulars, so I've been off to the races. That's how it was for me. I did learn on straights. It is possible to learn how to knit on straight needles. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you've now figured out how you're going to knit, how to do your purl stitch. Do a knit washcloth. Do a purl washcloth. Do a stockinette washcloth. These are terms that may or may not make a whole lot of sense to you right now. As you learn your stitches, they will. Stockinette is just knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one. And that's what gives you that smooth knit texture we're all familiar with as being knitting. Um, I showed you what it looks like when you alternate knit purls in the same row and then alternate an offset going back. I do not have a whole lot of other examples up here. And all the stuff that I have from filming this week, I have nothing up here. Anyway, you know how to knit, you know how to purl. You might know how to do basic, you know, knit two together or um, a yarn over increase, knitting into the front and back. Like these are all things, as you're watching these tutorial videos, you are going to see them talk about maybe. Great. You know how to knit, you know how to purl. You've gotten that far now. Go out on Ravelry. I don't like this dishcloth pattern, but it has a lot of stuff for you to learn in it as a basic pattern. Grandmother's favorite dishcloth. It's going to look a little wonky. Even for experienced knitters, it looks wonky. There are ways to make it not look wonky, but that's not what you're worried about right now. What you're worried about is learning how to increase from your corner out and how to decrease back down. So kind of like working a corner to corner crochet blanket, you're going to start with three stitches, you're going to increase out, and then you're going to decrease back down. Now you know how to knit, how to purl, how to increase, and how to decrease. Welcome to knitting. You are an official advanced beginner knitter. Welcome. <laughs> It's that simple. And I know it sounds crazy. And I know you're like, eh, you've been doing this for 10 years. Eh. I struggled for the pre previous 10 years to get that far. The next thing you're going to do, you've got now, you've got a couple wonky looking dishcloths. You got a wonky knit one, a wonky pearl one, a wonky stockinette one that's curling in on you. That's normal. You didn't do anything wrong. Now you've got a wonky looking, uneven, yarn overed grandmother's favorite dishcloth. Fantastic. So now you know about the average size of a dishcloth. You're up to four or five now. You only have about 10 to 15 more to go. The next thing you're going to do is either go online and use a free stitchinary. You can buy stitchinaries. I do recommend if for this project as you're learning how to knit this one specifically. It's the Vogue. If you're buying, if you are buying, 
The Vogue Knitting Stitchinary Volume 1 Knits and Pearls. Nothing fancy. Once again, we're not getting into fancy stitches. We're not worried about cables. We're not worried about lace. Basic stitches. You're going to come in here. And you're going to become your own designer. You're going to look at the pictures and be like, ooh, that would make a nice dishcloth. Let's figure out how to do it. <coughs> As you're casting on your stitches, you already know about the size you want a dishcloth to be. So you're going to cast on the appropriate number. So in the case of this one, this is a uh, stitch pattern 104 ripples and ridges, multiples of 16 plus two. So you're going to cast on 16. That's too small. You're going to cast on 16 more. That's too small. You're going to cast on another 16. Okay, we're getting there. Maybe we'll do one more and then plus two. And now you're just going to follow the pattern. Now, as you're making these, you're going to notice your work is going to curl uh, towards the back side. A lot of cases, that's normal. Your edges might curl up or curl back. That's normal. That's why almost everything you see in knitting has a garter stitch border on it or a crocheted border. These are things you're going to learn, and you're going to learn these things very fast and be super confused. Welcome to the club. We all went there. We all did it. It's normal. 100% normal. Welcome to the club. When you're doing garments and things like that, you will block these things out. You will put borders on them. That's, that's not what you're worried about. You're worried still about the mechanics of knitting. You're worried about learning how to read a pattern learning how to read stitches. When you drop a stitch and you will drop stitches and you will drop lots of stitches, you're going to go, go out into YouTube and go how to pick up dropped knit stitch, how to pick up dropped purl stitch. And there's once again, multiple ways to do it. Becky over at Funny Farm Crochet likes to use her crochet hook to just loop it straight up. It's a lot faster. I frequently drop stitches when I'm in the car, don't generally have a crochet hook with me, so I've learned how to knit up the ladder. Nothing wrong with it. Once again, multiple ways to achieve the same thing. I'm sorry guys, I am getting a phone call. I will be right back. Sorry about that. So, you now have a couple of these. You have your really, really wonky initial couple. You're a knitter. You now understand the fundamentals of knitting. You've probably pulled your hair out a couple of times. You've probably wanted to scream to the god of yarn, why would you put this, put me through this? And then you realize, I did it. That's okay. We've all been there. We've all done it. There's nothing wrong with it. But by the end of the 15 to 25 dish cloths, and there are beautiful patterns out there that are very beginner friendly. Um, my new favorite is the boxy dish cloth. Um, I will link that down below. I highly recommend it once you have the mastery of knits and pearls. That is a great one to go into if you're not quite not quite feeling ready for grandmother's favorite. And I will also link grandmother's favorite dishcloth down below too. <laughs> um, so you now have your knits and your pearls. You've now probably learned how to yarn over a knit two together, a slip slit knit. You've probably learned how to knit into the front and back of stitches. You may have even learned a make one increase where you pick up the bar stitch and or the bar of yarn in between the two stitches to make a stitch. These are techniques that are going to take you a long way. Now your first five dish cloths, you're not gifting those to anybody. Those are probably going to be used to clean the toilet and wash the car. They're, or 
If you're sentimental, you can keep one in a souvenir box to remind yourself where you started from. Until about five years ago, I had a lot of my stuff that, <laughs> a lot of my stuff that was brand, like when I was brand new, um, I tried intarsia, had holes everywhere. I tried to make a sock. I finished my sock toe this way instead of this way. Um, there were all kinds of boo-boos and mistakes. I think I have one of my first scarves somewhere and that's it. Um, but by the time you're done with this, and I know it sounds tedious, and I know it's going to take you six months in some cases. Some of y'all will be like me. It's going to take you 10 years to get your fingers around knitting. There's nothing wrong with it. We've all been there and we've all done it. Now, there is one other difference I want to talk about in your tools real quick. Yes, I am crazy. Yes, I have a box specifically for stitch markers now. And yes, it is awesome. But I actually bought it for scrapbooking stuff. None of my embellishments fit, so it became the home for my stitch markers when I'm not using them. When you are knitting, you need a round stitch marker when you transition to in the round because you've made your 25 dish claws now you already have a size 8 circular needle or a size 7 also acceptable i know you have worsted weight yarn in your stash because everybody has a worsted weight ball in their stash you're now going to make a hat i recommend the hill 60 pattern which i will link down below it is a beautiful, simple hat pattern. It gives you a very gorgeous rib detail. You have design elements that you are now prepared for in it, but you're now going to need a stitch marker. I, in general, am a huge fan of split ring stitch markers. These are from Lion Brand. They're like $4 for a pack of 25 or something. In that pack, there are multiple sizes. Certainly, I don't have to tell you, smaller size stitch markers go on the smaller needles, larger on the larger needles. I also have little rounds like this that cannot be used for anything but knitting stitch markers. These, because of the split ring, can be used in your crochet because you pick up your stitch here and just slip it on instead of just hooking it in like you do with the ear wire ones these in theory could be used but the catch of the earring back the lever back could catch in your knitting heads up you don't have to go out and buy something special but When you get into sock knitting or any anything on a finer gauge yarn, you're going to need smaller, more delicate stitch markers. I am a wild advocate of weird things that are best practices in knitting that other people feel meh in crochet and knitting. I am an advocate of blocking your work, steam blocking acrylics, wet blocking natural fibers. If you have one that is a 50-50 blend, stretch it out to wet block it. As it's still pinned out when it's dry, give it a hit of steam. And that will, if something has a higher acrylic content, that will actually help hold the natural fibers out more. And you won't have to be so aggressive in your blocking the next time. I am a huge advocate of stitch markers. I am also a huge advocate of lifelines. Now that you've mastered your dish cloths and your basic stitches, you've moved on to the Hill 60 pattern, you've maybe made a hat or two for members of your family, you're going to start wanting to do more things. You're going to want to start branching out. You're going to want to try color work or lace or cables. Lifelines are your best friend. As you're learning, doing a hat, stick a lifeline in there. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, what is a lifeline? I do not have a project nearby where I'm using one right now. Uh, I do have patterns with lifelines in them, though. They're just not here. 
But what you're going to do periodically as you're knitting, you're going to put, I prefer dental floss just because we all have the little trial size dental flosses from our dentist. Unscented waxed dental floss. Nothing special, nothing fancy. You're going to thread that dental floss on your tapestry needle. You're going to run it through all of your stitches in parallel with the cable of your needle. That way, it's like you still have a cable there. When you come back along and knit down, you're going to leave the dental floss hanging out there. And you want a good couple of inches so it doesn't slip into your work and you now have lost your stitches. If you make a mistake that you cannot recover from, you're not comfortable picking up stitches that way, you've mistwisted a cable, you can take the needle out, frog down to the lifeline, which is now holding your stitches just like this. You will slip your needle back into those stitches and start knitting again. So, you now know about lifelines. They are your best friend. You know about stitch markers. You know about what needles I recommend. You know what projects and in what order I recommend them. Grab your needles. Get going. Have fun. Enjoy it. It's going to be a little frustrating. It is going to be fidgety. You are kind of going to want to throw things out the window. It's okay. We've all done it. We've all been there. I actually have projects that have been in long-term timeout because I want to throw them out the window. All right, there is one other thing I want to address in this. I've already gone on now for half an hour, so I do want to end this fairly quickly. As a crocheter, you are coming from a craft that is a lot of blanket making. Blankets need to be durable. Blankets need to be washable. We don't necessarily want our blankets to be heirloom. We want them to be loved and drug around the backyard and kids building blocks on them and spilling food on them. So we need our blankets to be machine washable and generally machine dryable. A lot of what we do as crocheters is meant to be heavily used. We do a lot of household stuff. That's the nature of the beast. So. As the crochet community, en masse, we don't have an issue with synthetic fibers. We have preferences in our synthetic fibers, and we like nice quality synthetic fibers, but they're a huge part of what we use. A lot of our stashes are made up of stuff that is more acrylic than wool. As you enter into the knitting community, do not be surprised to find yarn snobbery. Knitters don't mean to sound that way. Um, I was really taken aback by it and kind of scared by it. I didn't want to associate to other knitters. I love wool. I, I don't particularly love working with cotton, but I like cotton in general. I love the linen. Love it. Viscose. Fine with it. Knitters make garments. A lot of stuff that knitters make are very garment heavy. It's a very garment heavy craft. And these are things that are meant to be worn close to the skin where we need breathable fibers. So knitters, a lot of times, get a little snobby about yarn. They don't understand where crocheters are coming from with their love of acrylic. Um, they don't get it. They don't understand it. I know knitters who make some of the most beautiful Aran sweaters and gorgeous lace shawls. They've never made a blanket. A couple of them might have done a baby blanket and maybe use like a Karen one pound or something. But all in all, most of the knitters I know, they've not been very household heavy, especially since they learned how. And they made a bunch of dishcloths and stuff. <laughs> don't let it scare you off. And there is nothing wrong with knitting with acrylic fibers. I do it all the time. This is acrylic. The shawl I showed you is acrylic. 
that's crochet, 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 crochet. Um, this is natural fibers. So of the three knitted projects I have, two of mine are acrylic, one is natural. I didn't understand when I came into the knitting community why there was such a divergence in yarn. And a lot of it does have to do with the fact, I mean, if you're making sweaters, if you're making, um, you know, things that are, you need breathable, natural fiber is the way to go. Acrylic fiber does not breathe. Um, I know a lot of Southerners are terrified of wool because it's going to be too hot. But wool is a natural fiber. It naturally breathes it's warmer than cotton. It will retain more heat than cotton, but it breathes like cotton. Um, a good quality wool is a good quality wool. Um, there's inexpensive and expensive ones, but um, they all breathe. And it's the beautiful thing about natural fibers. So bear with the knitting community. Um, don't, don't be antagonistic. Don't be, um, what's wrong with you? This is beautiful yarn. People are going to come at you. Um, I don't know anybody that hasn't dealt with that. Uh, even knitters who are knitters have to deal with it. Um, I know Ross, the Smells Like Yarn podcast, he is capable of crocheting. He just prefers to knit. He is a knitter who knits and knits a lot of stuff. Uses a lot of big box acrylic and loves it. He's like me. It's beautiful. It's colorful. It's soft. It feels nice. I'm going to use it. There are knitters like that, but even he in videos has mentioned where people have kind of backlashed and called him a big box yarn person. Don't let the haters get you down. Don't let anybody tell you you're doing something wrong by using the fibers you love. I'm excited to start using this. This is persona non grata and half of the knitting community because of this label right here. Um, so just heads up, it is out there. Um, as you get into some of the Facebook communities and things like that, it's not as bad as it used to be. It is getting better because the big box manufacturers are producing higher and higher quality grade acrylic. Uh, the first one that I saw knitters actually picking up because they liked the feel of it was Vanna's Choice from Lion Brand. And from there, we now have the beautiful um, Wool Free Sock Yarn from Premier, the uh, Premier Anti-Pilling, a lot of these new rollouts from Red Heart are just gorgeous, smooshy, soft, smooth <sighs> yarns. We know this as crocheters. We know this. We are not adverse to acrylic yarns. But it has taken the knitting community some time to pick up on the quality shift. We are seeing that in our paychecks or... Uh, Wallets a little bit as we're spending a little bit more on yarn, but we are getting a higher quality product for the most part in the acrylic community. So be forewarned, the snobbery is out there. Um, it's not as violent as when I say good quality needle, but it's out there. Um, and you might get some snarky comments. You might get some, I would never use that ignore it. They don't know what they're missing. They're coming around, but they don't know what they're missing. So as you've done with crochet, find your tribe. There are a lot of us out there who knit and crochet. There are a lot of us who enjoy using a wide variety of fibers. Weird sounds coming from downstairs. I can't have just like a normal video where I talk to you guys and anyway, so you have your needle, you have your yarn, you have your instructions of what to make for your first couple <coughs> 30 projects, 
20 to 25 dishcloths, three or four hats. You have my recommendation with the boxy dishcloth, grandmother's favorite dishcloth, and the Hill 60 hat. Those are all beautiful beginner friendly things. Now, if you're coming in halfway, you've already, you already know how to knit and purl. Beautiful. Tax yourself. Try the Hill 60 pattern. Go to your stitchinary and try some of those patterns. You're going to fail. There are going to be failures. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. We've all done it. And there are a lot of knitters out there. And there are a lot of podcasters in general, I've noticed, both in the knitting and crochet community, who say, oh, well, I don't feel like anything. Here's my perfection. I'm telling you right now, them, them people are lying. They've been there. They've made mistakes. They probably made a mistake today. They're just hiding it. So, go forth. Please take my advice. Take time. Be patient with yourself. Enjoy the process. It is a process. It's not going to just magically... But it will click. Like I said, it took me, I probably picked up knitting needles no less than 12 times before I got it. And I cannot seem to get back in focus. I mean, 10, 12, 15 times before I got it over the course of 10 to 12 years. Be patient with yourself. Because when I seriously decided, okay, I am not moving off of this project until I figure out knitting. I was watching Nitty Gritty. It was when it was still airing on television. And I was like, okay, there are like 30 different ways I've seen people do this. I'm going to start copying them. That's why I always say go back to Nitty Gritty if you can find it. Um, but be patient. I mean, give yourself time to really get comfortable with it. It is, at first it feels fidgety. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, this is kind of natural now. So give yourself time to evolve. Get, give yourself time to enjoy the process. So I hope something in here helped somebody along the way. I really love doing both knitting and crochet. I think they are both valuable tools to have in your arsenal. I love knit sweaters with crochet trims. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to learn how to knit. And at the time, there weren't a whole lot of crochet patterns out there that had a finer texture to the fabric. Even when I was skinny, I was not petite. So, chunky chunky was not something I wanted to go for. Everybody has their goal in knitting. Uh, Becky at Funny Farm Crochet wanted to learn how to make socks. And I'm hearing that from a lot of people, that you want to learn how to knit socks. That's wonderful. Socks aren't that hard. Once you know how to do a hat, you can transition very simply to socks. There's really no new stitches involved in it. It's just how they're laid out. So I highly recommend being patient with yourself. The advice I'm giving you is the same advice I've given a lot of my friends I've taught how to knit. And while I was able to work one-on-one -on -one with them to show them how I knit and maybe try to help them get their hands around it that way, you know, there is nothing wrong with you doing it a different way. And I do think the more exposure you have to it, the better. The more exposure to the technique you have, the better. So grab your crochet and watch some knitting tutorials. Watch if you can find episodes. I'm Vicki Howell does have a new show on YouTube. I really have not watched it as much as I did Nitty Gritty. Um, I have watched some episodes. It does seem to be very similar to Nitty Gritty. They do seem to have a very similar filming style of the people's hands, her guest hands, as they're knitting. So give it a shot and, and see if you can glean some of the same information I did out of her show. She herself has some beautiful tutorials. So you can go to Vicki Howell's site and just watch her teach you how to do it too. She also 
knits and crochets. So welcome. Uh, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to comment down below. Shoot me an email, send me a message on Instagram, send me a message on Ravelry. I do try to respond. There are a couple of people who have emailed me and commented in my videos prior wanting this information. So Delisa, thank you so much, sweetheart, and never, ever feel like you are hijacking my comment section by asking questions. You're one of about 10 people who ask the same thing. Um, go forth, enjoy your yarn, enjoy the experience of learning something new. I hope to see you guys real soon. Happy Easter. And I hope that this weekend is filled with love, joy, and blessings for you all. Bye.